Hello students, this is my second lecture on Newton's law or D'Alembert's principle. In the first lecture, we had first covered the problems of single box or single uh, uh, box or particular object uh, objects motion. Then we considered the connecting bodies, uh, connected bodies uh, problems. In the first type, we covered the problems where the acceleration of the two bodies are seen. Then we took a few problems which were based on constant length of string method. Now, in this lecture, we will cover some more uh, problems which were, will be based on general observation, which will be based on curvilinear motion and varying acceleration as well as based on motion diagram. So, these will be the four types of the problems we will cover uh, based on Newton's law. Now, first, today we start with problems based on general observation. See, there are certain types of the problems in uh, Newton's law what we come across. Uh, which in which it is difficult to apply constant length of string method, but it is easy to apply the concepts of general observation, principles of general observation. General observation is something we put it in the in a manner so that it is accepted in the examination. It is something what we, is, we observe it or we just general principles we apply and then we are in a position to get the solution. So this you will observe it in next three, four problems on this time. So we take first problem of uh, today's lecture which is based on uh, general observation. Two masses are interconnected with pulley system. Neglect internal and uh, friction effect of the pulley. That means pulley is frictionless. If the pulley is frictionless, tension the string on the two sides will be seen. And the call, determine the acceleration of mass M2. He's asking acceleration of mass M2. That, that is A2 is basically required, right? M1 is 50 kg and M2 is 40 kg. Now students, you can see that here there is a, if I assume that general observation, See that if this block uh, 2, M2, is pulled down by distance, say, x, then this x, this loop is the same pull uh, string, this string is same. If this block is pulled down by x, I mean, you can say distance moved by block uh, x2, block uh, M2 is x2, that is equal to x vertically down. If it is pulled down by x, then this loop gets shortened, length of this loop gets shortened by x, right? Now, this is, there are two segments, parallel segments of this pulley. So, this movable pulley will go up by x by 2. This movable pulley will go up by x by 2. So, that is distance moved by block F1, M1. All right, I repeat once again. This is the general observation. Suppose this is block M2 is pulled down by 1 meter. So, this pulley will go up by half meter. Why it goes up by half meter? Because the shortened length gets divided into two parallel segments. So, here to put it into a presentation, which is accepted in the examination, we'll say that x2, suppose x2 is x uh, down. That means block M2 is pulled down by x. Then this movable pulley will go up by x by i2, and this block M1 will also go up by x by 2. So x2 is x downwards, so x1 will be x by 2. Now, x1 upon x2 is x upon 2x. How 2x you got it? This was x by 2, x1, and this is x. So 1 by 2, x, x gets cancelled. Or you get it, x2 is equal to 2x1. Differentiating twice with respect to the differentiating twice with respect to t, a2 is equal to 2a1. By chance here, twice is missing. Differentiating twice with respect to t, a, you get it, a2 is equal to 2a1. Now, you draw the free body diagrams. First, you draw the free body diagram of massless pulley. This is movable pulley, which is massless. We consider tension in this main string is t. Tension in the string uh, connecting the movable pulley with the block m1 is t1. So, when we draw a video of this massless pulley, we write sigma fi is equal to 0. Why it is becoming 0? Actually, it is in motion, right? But since it is uh, considered to be massless, so acceleration gets nullified. So we, as in previous problems also, we understood. So we can directly write sigma. For massless pulley, we can always write sigma fi is equal to 0. So t1 is equal to 2t. Then we consider FBD of block m1. This block will tend to go up, right? We are considering its acceleration as upward. Right? This is given in the examination to the problem also that this uh, tends to accelerate down, this tends to accelerate up. So T1 is 2T. Uh, weight of this block M1 is 15 to 9.81, 490.5. Right? Apply sigma Fy is equal to MA. Sigma Fy is equal to forces in the direction of acceleration are taken as positive. So 2T minus 490.5 is equal to 50A1. Right? You got one equation. Then block M2. When we talk about block M2, uh, weight vertically down 14 to 9.81 this is tension t away right its acceleration is down apply sigma fi is equal to ma i'll take 
392.4 as positive since force in direction acceleration are taken a positive. 392.4 minus t is equal to 40 at. Right, students. Here you have to solve the two simultaneous equation. Here a1 we have written 50 a1, but next line I have written 25 a2. That means I have written a1 is equal to a2 by 2. We have substituted here at this level a1 value. A1 is a2 uh, by 2. So that's why it becomes 25 a2. Now solving equation number one and two, you get the value of t and you get the value of a2. Basically, t is not asked, he is asking a2 because he is asking acceleration of mass m. So final unknown is a2. A2 is 2.803 meter per second square. So here we have not used any mathematical technique. We have got the relation between the acceleration of the connected bodies using some general observation. You will see that in next three four problems, we will be using this kind of the principles only. Let's move to the next one. Just a minute, there is a slight problem. Just Just a minute, please hold on, please. Okay, uh, let's move to the next sum. Second sum. The system shown in the figure is released from rest. What is the height lost by the bodies A, B, and C in two seconds? Take coefficient of kinetic friction at rubbing surface as 0.4. Find also the tension in the wires. Now, students, you can see that. This is uh, the block A of 5 kg is kept on the inclined plane, making 30 degrees horizontal with coefficient of friction between the block A and the plane is 0.4. This is block B, which is kept on the horizontal plane, all right, with coefficient of friction 0.4. Uh, there is a string in which tension is uh, designated as T2, taken around frictionless pulley, connected to block C. There is a string connecting the block A, taken around frictionless pulley, and it is connected to block C. Now you can see that by general observation, you can understand that if block C is pulled down by one meter, suppose block C is pulled down by one meter, then block A will slide down by one meter and even block B will also move towards left by one meter, right? So distance moved by all the three blocks will be same. Distance moved by all the three blocks will be same. I mentioned here, by observation, you can understand that both the blocks X, A and B will move, move same distance. And even C will also move same distance because X, A and X, B are same, right? So, or by there's no need to give this explanation also. We can directly also, you can say by observation, uh, distance moved by three blocks is same. As you can understand, if the blocks is pulled down by one meter, A and B will also move by one meter. So, if distance moved by three blocks is same, differentiate twice with respect to T, uh, T, we get acceleration of three blocks will also be same. Now, height loss as far as concerned, first we'll get the acceleration uh, will solve it and get the acceleration of each block then we'll understand the height lost and he has given that uh, after two seconds each block will start from rest each block will have its own acceleration right uh, that is going to be equal but then first we have to get that acceleration so first we draw free body diagram of block a when we draw free body diagram of block a its weight is 5 into 9.81 vertically down 49.05 Plane is making 30 with horizontal. Normal reaction N1 will make 30 with vertical. This tension is T1. Acceleration of this block is A down. All the acceleration, all the three blocks are same. 
as motion is down friction will be up we write for sigma f y is equal to 0 n1 is equal to 49.05 cos 30 sigma fx is equal to ma t1 plus 49.05 sin 30 weight component along the plane minus 0 0.4 n1 is equal to 5a you got equation sub so value of n1 is substituted into it you get the equation t1 is equal to 7.533 is equal to 5a or t1 is equal to 5a minus 7.5 identically we'll take now free body diagram of block b and block c Now we consider three body diagram block B. Its weight 4 into 9.81, 39.24 vertically now, normal reaction N2. Acceleration is to the left, tension T2 in the string. As motion is to the left, friction is to the right. Right sigma F5 is equal to 0, N1 is 39.24, sigma Fx is equal to M. T2 minus 0.4 N2 is equal to 4, that is mass into A. Then N2 value you can substitute 39.24, then T2 can be expressed as 4A plus. 15.896. Then we come to block C. If you draw fiber diagram block C, weight is vertically down 15 into 9.81, 147.15. Tension in the two strings will be different because these are the two separate strings. One is T1 tension, other is T2. Acceleration is down. When you write sigma F y is equal to MA, weight will be taken as positive. What 147.15 minus T1 minus T2 is equal to MA. M is 15 into A. That's what has been applied. Further, if you simplify that, 147.15 minus T1 plus T2 is equal to 15. T1 and T2 values will be substituted. T1 value will be substituted from ABD of block A. T2 value will be substituted from ABD of block B. Then if you solve this equation, we get acceleration of each block. Once you have got acceleration of each block, you can understand that. Now you can find the distance moved by each block in uh, two seconds. Initial velocity of each block is zero. Right, acceleration of each body is 5.79 meter per second square t is 2. So we can write s is equal to ut plus half a t square u0 half a t square. You get 11.5. Students, as the block c is hanging uh, in uh, so distance moved by block c will be same as 11.5. So height lost uh, by block c will be 11.5. All right, this is your block c. Then block b is on a horizontal plane, block b is on horizontal plane. So, even when it is moving to the left by 11.58 meter, it will not lose any height. It will not lose any height. Now, we come to block A. Block A is on inclined plane and it has traveled the distance 11.58, all right, making 30 degrees x axis, right? Now, the height loss by block A will be component of this distance uh, in vertical direction, right? So, that is HA. From this diagram, you can understand plane is making 30 with horizontal, sloping distance 11.58 the side opposite to the angle will be sin f. So HA, height loss by block A will be 11.58 sin 30. That is what is 5.79. So in this problem, we asked you to find the height loss by each block. The block which is on the horizontal plane will not, will not lose any height. The block which is hanging in the air will lose the same height as that what we have calculated. And the block which is inclined plane, we have to find the vertical component of the sloping distance. So that is the height loss by block. We move to the next sum. Call number three. A two-step pulley supports two weights P and Q as shown in the figure. Find the acceleration of block P and Q. Assume P is 40 Newton, Q is 60 Newton, R1 is equal to 2RT. 
Let let friction inertia the pulley stick G is equal to 10. Now students, you should first understand what kind of the pulley it is there. It is being called a step pulley. So you can call it step pulley or you can count or call it as compound pulley. The step pulley or compound pulley is the pulley which has got two wheels, which has got two wheels, right? One is smaller wheel, another is bigger wheel. Or, or one, you can say it is compound pulley has two pulleys, one is smaller, another is bigger. But both are connected, coinciding their centers so that both will move together as one unit. That means if bigger part turns by one revolution, smaller part will also turn by one revolution. Compound pulley is mounted on the hinge at the center. Now, there is a string which is wound around the bigger pulley and to which block P is attached. There is another string which is wound around the smaller pulley and to which block Q is attached. Now, to understand uh, relation between the acceleration of the two blocks P and Q, right? First, we'll assume that the step pulley is turned uh, by one revolution in clockwise direction. Look at this diagram. If this step pulley is turned uh, in clockwise direction by one revolution, length of the string that will unwind from the bigger pulley will be bigger circumference. Bigger uh, circumference, bigger radius is R1, so it is 2 pi R1. Length of the string that will wind as it turns in clockwise direction, block Q will go up. I mean, they'll be winding on the smaller pulley. That is 2 pi R2, 2 pi R2, right? So you can say that the uh, uh, XP is 2 pi R1, XQ is 2 pi R2. So again, I repeat that if it is turned by one revolution, the block P will move by uh, bigger circumference. Uh, uh, it will go down by bigger uh, distance equal to bigger circumference. Block Q will go up uh, by the distance equal to smaller circumference. So XP is equal to 2 pi R1, XQ is equal to 2 pi R2. So XP upon XQ is 2 pi R1 upon 2 pi R2. 2 pi 2 pi gets cancelled, R1 upon R2. R1 is given to you as 2 pi R2, 2, 2 R2, substitute that. R2 gets cancelled, you get Q. So XP is equal to 2 XP. All right. So differentiating with respect to T, differentiating with respect to T, you get AP is equal to 2 AP. You get AP is equal to 2 AP. So this way, we have arrived at the acceleration uh, 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 relation between the acceleration of the two blocks. Now, Another thing is that whether this pulley will turn, this is we assumed initially to get the relation between the acceleration of the two blocks. Now, next question comes, whether it will turn clockwise, they start moving in clockwise, that start accelerating in clockwise direction or in anti-clockwise direction. See, if you see that mass of the block, or oh, sorry, weight of the block is P is a, a 40 Newton, whereas the weight of the block Q is 60 Newton. But it is not that uh, heavier will go down here or lighter will go down because they are not mounted on uh, ordinary pulley, normal pulley. They are mounted. They are mounted on two different pulleys. So here, lighter and heavier does not work. But what works? You can see that initially when the system starts, what will be the movement of P about uh, uh, center of the pulley? This is 40 into R1. 40 into R1. R1 is 2R2. So 40 into 2R2 is 80R2. So this P will try to rotate in clockwise direction, and it will generate the movement 80R2. Whereas block Q is having 60 Newton. And all right, and if you take its movement about uh, axis center of the pulley, it is 60 R2 because smaller radius is R2. So clockwise movement, block P, uh, block P will try to rotate the pulley in clockwise direction with the movement 80 R2, whereas Q will try to rotate in anti-clockwise direction by 60 R2. So which one is greater? 80 R2. So that's why there is more movement uh, in clockwise direction, less movement in anti-clockwise direction. That's why the net effect is that pulley will start accelerating or rotating in clockwise direction. All right. Now, after that, now we first consider FBD of this massless pulley. What is the meaning of massless? If the pulley is massless, its mass moment of inertia will be zero. See, if this pulley was given uh, without dimension, we could have considered it as a particle. We could have applied directly, uh, I mean, uh, uh, sigma fx, sigma fi is equal to zero. But this pulley is with dimension. So this is a rigid body. But since you are not dealing with the motion of the rigid body, you are not dealing with the motion of rigid body. You are considering, as per your syllabus, you have the motion of particles, right? So here, uh, they make it massless. If it is massless, its mass moment of inertia of this compound pulley about x rotation will be zero. If mass moment of inertia is zero, then sigma mo is equal to io into alpha is actually the equation of the rigid body, which is comparable with t is equal to i into alpha. So sigma mo is what? Algebraic sum of the moment of all forces about x rotation. Io is at the moment of inertia about x rotation. Alpha is angular acceleration. But since I0 is 0, mass moment of inertia about x rotation is 0. So right hand side becomes 0 since it is massless. Sigma mo is 0. So now this side tension uh, in the string, we have taken T. T into R1 
is equal to T1 into R2. Substitute the value of R1 as 2R2. R2, R2 gets cancelled. You get T1 is equal to 2. Then we consider free body diagram of the two blocks. We consider free body diagram of the two blocks. First, we consider FBD of block T. We understood that it will accelerate down. 40 Newton is the weight. T is the tension, right? Uh, and acceleration is AP. Now apply sigma FI is equal to MA. 40 minus T is equal to 4 AP. Why 4 AP? 40 upon 10. Weight upon G. 40 minus T is equal to 4 AP. You got one equation. Then you consider FBD of block Q. Block Q will accelerate up, take you up. Weight vertically down, tension T up, away from the block. Right? Sigma FI is equal to MA. E1 minus 60 is equal to 60 upon 10 AQ. Right? Here acceleration is given to you as, uh, sorry, acceleration due to gravity is given as 10. So T1 minus 60 is 6 AQ. T1 is 2T minus 60, 6 AQ is AP by 2. 2T minus 60 is 3 AP. Solving equations 1 and 2. This is equation number 1. This is equation number 2. If you solve it, you get AP as 1.82 meter per second square. Now, AQ is AP by 2, 0.91 meter per second square up. Right? This way, we have got the acceleration of the two blocks. That's what he had asked. Suppose he has tension. So, you can just substitute the value of AP and AQ in equation number, AP value in the equation number 1 and equation number 2. Now, next time, problems based on curvilinear motion. Students, what is curvilinear motion? When a body or, or a particle moves along the curved path, a curved path, its motion is described as curvilinear motion. So, so far, the problems, what we have solved, the particle or the object or the body was moving along the straight path. So, that means we are applying the concepts of rectilinear motion on it. But at times, we come across the uh, bodies which are moving along the curved path. So in that case, we need to apply the Newton's law either in rectangular direction, I mean in X and Y direction or along normal and tangential directions. So as we understood rectangular components and normal and tangential components, so similarly, you will be applying Newton's law uh, either in X and Y directions or along normal and along tangent. So next three, four problems will be based on curvilinear motion. Once you have applied Newton's law, the problem gets reduced to that of uh, after applying Newton's law, it gets uh, reduced to that of curvilinear motion. Now, we take question number four. The bob of two meter pendulum describes an arc of a circle in a vertical plane if the tension in the cord is 2.5 times weight of the bob. That means tension is given to you 2.5 mg. Find the magnitude of velocity and acceleration of the bob in that position. G is 9.8. Now, you are given it is a simple pendulum. All right. Describes an arc of the circle in a position. What is shown in the diagram, it's making 30 degrees. This is the length of the string, which is 2 meter. This is simple pendulum or a bob, right? Given tension is 2.5 mg, radius of curvature of this path, which is shown as the arc of the circle, is 2 meter. Now we consider free body diagram of the bob. Weight is vertically now, right? Uh, as in this case, normal and tangential will be easier because x and y, no data is given. Right, but I can easily mark normal and tangent. Normal is directed towards center of curvature. This is normal direction. Right. This angle is 30 degree from here. This is 30. So here also this is 30. Which we can uh, and uh, tangent to the arc is your tangent direction. Right. So tangent and normal are mutually perpendicular. If this angle is 30, you can resolve mg cos 30 and mg sin 30. Along the tangent, tangential acceleration is 80. Along the normal, the normal acceleration is AM. Your free body diagram is uh, ready. And you can apply the Newton's law along the tangent and along the normal. So let's apply Newton's law uh, along the tangent. Sigma FT is equal to M80. Sigma FT is MD sine 30 is equal to M80. MM gets cancelled. It's not given. It's not required. M gets cancelled. 80 is G sine 30. G is 9.8. 9.8 sine 30 is 4.9 meter per second square. This will be applied the Newton's law along the tangent. Now we apply Newton's law along the normal. When you apply Newton's law along the normal, right? So 
forces in the direction of acceleration are taken positive. So T minus mg cos 30 is equal to m a n. This is over here. Continuation. T minus mg cos 30 is m a n. A n is v square upon rho. T is 2.5 mg minus mg cos 30. M v square upon rho. Rho is 2 meter. Again, m gets cancelled. 2.5 g minus g cos 30 is equal to v square by 2. Now, you can find velocity with it. How you can find velocity with it, students? Just square root of 2 into 9.8. G is also taken outside. 2.5 minus cos 30. So if you solve this, you get a 5.66 meter per second. Then normal acceleration is v square upon rho. Substitute the value of v and substitute the value of rho as 2 meter, you get n. Now, total acceleration is square root of an square plus vt square, right? Substitute the value of an, substitute the value of vt, you get it, total acceleration. And that's what we have asked in this. Let's move to the next sum. A small box rests on a turntable 0.5 meter away from its center. That means radial distance of the box from the axle rotation is 0.5 meter. Turntable starting from rest is rotated in such a way that block undergoes a constant linear velocity. The block motion of the block is such that, that it is undergoing the constant linear velocity. Determine the angular velocity of the turntable at the instant when the block starts slipping. Take news point. See, radius of curvature or radial distance of the box from the axial rotation is 0.5 meter. As the block undergoes a constant linear velocity, it is zero. How come it is zero? dv by dt. Rate of change of velocity with time is zero, right? Now, we draw free body diagram. So that means this box, which is uh, resting on a turn table, which is rotating, right? It is subjected to only normal acceleration. If you draw the free body diagram of the box, weight is vertically now, normal reaction N1 is mg, Normal acceleration directed towards center of curvature, and it will have friction between the box and the turn table, which is mu n1. You write sigma fy is equal to zero as there is no motion in y direction, n1 is equal to m. And this friction is mu n1 will be equal to m n. Sigma fn is equal to m n when you apply. Only force in normal direction is what mu n1? m a n is v square upon rho. m m gets cancelled, right? You get the velocity v. Right, substitute the value of g. You get velocity as 1.4007 is equal to r omega. Right, b r value substituted 0.5, you get the omega, and that's what he is asking. So, here also it is under motion of the box is curvilinear motion. Next, sphere A, next problem. Sphere A is supported by two wires, AB and AC. Find out tension in the wire AC before AB is cut, right? And just after AB is cut. Now, you can see that this is like ceiling. There are two cables, AB and AC, right? Uh, making angle 50 and 70 degree with horizontal. Here, there is a ball attached of mass 50 newton. Then, before wire AB is cut, the ball is in equilibrium, ball is at rest. So it is example of concurrent force system. To find the tension in the two wires, you need to draw the free body diagram of this ball, which will be example of concurrent force system in equilibrium. Now consider FPD of the ball. Weight vertically down, tension in cable AC is TAC, which will make 70 degree horizontal. This tension is TAB, which will make 50 degree with horizontal. Applying Lamy's theorem, TAC upon sine 90 plus 50, TAB upon sine 90 plus 70 is equal to 50 upon sine 60. You get TAB and TAC. Now, this is what is statics part of the sum. Now, second part, what he says, just after wire AB is cut. Students, pay attention. Just after wire AB is cut, sphere will start rotating about C. As you know that this string is cut, so it, this uh, ball is attached to cable AC, so it will start rotating about C, and this will start rotating from rest. Rest means what? its initial velocity is zero. And he says just after wire is cut. Just after wire is cut, it starts rotating from rest. That means its initial velocity is zero. If initial velocity at that instant is zero, normal acceleration will also be zero. That means it is subjected to only 
tangential acceleration. It is subjected to only tangential acceleration. Now, in that stage, we draw a bit of the sphere. Weight is vertically now. This angle is 70, this is 70, this is 20. This is then again 70. All right. Now, this is normal is directed towards center of curvature. This is tension. N is zero. This is tangential direction. Perpendicular to it. Acceleration along the tangent is 80. 50 is resolved. 50 cos 70 and 50 sin 70. Now you apply Newton's law along the normal. T minus m, uh, 50 sin 30 is man. An is 0. So T is equal to 50 sin 30. So you get the value of T. Right? Which is 46.98. As in this problem, he is asking only tension T just after wire is cut. He is not asking tangential acceleration. So there is no need to apply Newton's law along the end. Okay, let's move to the next sum. A 2 kg particle rests on a very smooth horizontal plane and is acted upon the force component fx is 0 and fy is 3 meter. If x is 0, y is 0, vx is 6 meter per second, vy is 2 meter per second, when t is equal to 0, determine the equation uh, y is equal to fx which describes the path of part. Uh, part. Now students, as if you look into this problem, read this problem, you can see that uh, you are given with force component in x and y direction. You are given x and y, you are given all uh, boundary conditions are given in x and y direction. So here you should apply in this problem, Newton's law in x and y directions. All right. So first we apply uh, fx equal to mx. There is only, uh, there is no force in x direction. Mass is 2 gauge into x, so ax is 0. If ax is 0, we can write it as equal to dvx upon dt. Separate terms integrating both sides. So we have dvx uh, integration will be vx. This is 0 dt will become c1. Right. c1 is 6 because at x, at uh, t is equal to 0, you are given the value of vx as 6. So c1 is 6. Now, vx is 6, which can be written as dx by dt. Separating the terms, integrating both sides, you get x is equal to 60 plus c2. All right. At t is equal to 0, x is 0. So you get c2 0. x is equal to 60. Right. Now, identically, we take fy F is equal to may. Right. fy is 3, m is 2, ay. ay is 1.5 is equal to dv by upon dt. Separate terms are integrating both sides. dy is equal to 1.52 plus c3. At t is equal to 0, vy is given as 2 as boundary condition over here are given. Substitute into that, you get c3 2. So vy is equal to 1.52 plus 2. Write it dv by uh, dy upon dt. Separate terms integrating both sides, you get y is equal to 1.52 square by 2 plus 2 t plus c4. Again, apply boundary condition at t is equal to 0, y is 0. You get c4 as 0. So you get y is equal to 0.75 t square plus 2 t. Spend Equation of the path uh, uh, in curvilinear motion is the relation between x and y. So if you have x in terms of t, you have y in terms of t, you simply need to eliminate t, you will get the equation of path. From here, what I can write, t is equal to x, y, 6. So substitute the value out here. So substitute the value of t, x, y, 6, you get relation between x and y. And that's what is called as the equation of path. And that's what is asked on this side. All right. Now, another type of sum. Problems based on varying acceleration. Understand. So far, all the problems, what we have come across in this chapter, in my previous lecture, as well as in this lecture, when we had drawn the free body diagram of any body or the box, all right, uh, all forces, acting on the free body diagram were constant. All forces acting on the free body diagram were constant. If all forces acting on the free body diagram are constant, and when we apply Newton's law, your acceleration will also be constant. And if acceleration is constant, equations of motion can be applied. Equations of motion can be applied. All right? Now, but if on the free body diagram, one of the forces is function of time or function of velocity or function of displacement, when you apply Newton's law, it gets reduced to that of varying acceleration, right? The concept remains the same. Only thing is, after applying Newton's law, problem gets reduced to that of varying acceleration. So, we will take just one sum to understand the concept how we deal with it. I read question number 9 or problem number 9. A 100 kg crate is hoisted up the incline using the cable and motor amp. For a short time, the force in the cable is 800 T. 
t square when i read force in the cable is 800 t square immediately it should come to my mind that tension in the cable is 800 t square if the crate has initial velocity is 2 meter per second when t is 0 determine the velocity when t is 2 second coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the incline is mu k 0.3 g is 10 you can see this is the crate this is being pulled up using a motor right tension in this cable is 800 t square immediately i should understand that this problem is of varying acceleration and after time newton's law it will get reduced to that of acceleration as function of time let's draw free body diagram of the crate you can observe from this diagram that sin theta is 8 by 17 opposite upon hypotenuse and cos theta is base upon hypotenuse that is 15 upon 17 fbd of this crate when you draw it weight will act vertically down 1000 plane is making angle theta with horizontal normal reaction animal will make angle theta with vertical this is 1000 cos theta component and 1000 sin theta F is 800 t square. Motion the crate is up. Friction is down. 0.3. Acceleration will be obviously up as force causing motion is being applied. We write sigma F y is equal to zero. So what is that? N one is equal to 1000 cos theta. Sigma F x is equal to m 800 t square minus 1000 sin theta minus 0.3 n one is equal to m. Substitute the value of n one 1000 cos theta. All right. Then cos theta sin theta values should be substituted. After substituting cos theta and sin theta values. It gets reduced to a is equal to eight t square plus seven point three five. So, students, in this type of the problems, when any of the forces on the free body diagram is function of time, we can understand that it's going to reduce to acceleration as function of time. If any force on the FBD is function of, uh, if in terms of uh, s, then we'll understand acceleration will come out to be function of s. If any force on the FBD is uh, in terms of velocity so that means your acceleration will finally will come out to be in terms of velocity so depending upon the what whatever way it reduces accordingly we will deal with the problem of varying acceleration so in the chapter of varying acceleration we have understood that if acceleration is function of time we write it equal to dv by dt separate the terms of velocity and time integrating both sides you get v is equal to 8t cube by 3 minus 7.353t plus c1 now we will put the boundary condition What is the boundary condition? At t is equal to zero, uh, v is two meter per second. So c one is two. So your velocity is eight t cube by three minus seven point c five three t plus two. Substitute the value of t as two second. When you substitute the value of t as v is eight by three t cube minus seven point three five three t. Substitute the value t two plus two eight point six three meter per second. So that Velocity of this crate after two second is eight point six three meter per second. Now, students, we move to the last problem of uh, uh, Newton's law that will be based on motion diagram. So, let's understand how and when the problem uh, problem of Newton's law gets reduced to that of motion. problems based on motion diagram students at times you will see that you are given with ft diagram you are given with force versus time diagram and you are not given with much information about the motion of the object it is not mentioned whether it is resting on horizontal plane or inclined plane it is not mentioned what is coefficient of friction or nothing is mentioned so in that case you uh, can understand that given ft diagram Can be reduced to AT diagram. How can this? You know that F is equal to m. So A is equal to F by m. So if the y ordinates of the FT diagram are divided by mass, it gets converted into AT diagram. Now let's read the problem. The uh, uh, solve problem number nine. A body of mass five kg, which is initially at rest at origin, is subjected to force varying with time, as shown in the figure. Find the time when the body again comes to rest. That means again when its velocity becomes zero. When it comes again to its original position, original position means what? From where it started. That means in the first part he is asking time when the velocity is zero. In second point uh, part he is asking the time when displacement is zero. He has given this FT diagram. You can see that this is given that, right? FT diagram. If you read the problem, you don't find any other information. So given FT diagram can be converted into AT diagram. How come? F is m a is equal to f by m. F by m. Mass is five kg. So all y ordinates if are divided by five, it gets converted to AT. All right. Now you can see that I am now calling it AT diagram. Y ordinate it was plus hundred divided by five, it is plus twenty. It is 
minus 30 minus 30 upon 5 minus 6. All right, AT diagram is ready. Now, from AT diagram, you can find the first part solution when body comes again to zero. We can apply uh, VT, VT diagram calculations, we can do it. Uh, 0 to 6 second. VT, uh, v, uh, 0 to 6 second. V6 minus V0 is this area of time. What is that? Half into 6 into 20. V, V0 is 0, it starts from rest. So V20 is 60 meter per second. And this velocity we can say maximum also. How come it is maximum? We know that during rectilinear motion, velocity is maximum at the end of positive AT diagram. See, so positive AT diagram is ending, ending at 6 seconds. So that at the end, at 6 seconds, velocity will be maximum. Although it is not asked, but just I have listed it, that velocity is maximum at the end of positive AT diagram. Now, uh, you have to find the time when the velocity comes, uh, where the velocity becomes zero. So I'm considering that it is given in the problem that T is the time when velocity becomes zero. He has marked this dotted line and he has shown T. So we write from six to T second. We write now, we have uh, T to six second. So I'll write it VT minus V6 is equal to this negative area. So minus outside T minus six into six. VT is zero, it is given, it comes to S minus V6 is 60 minus T minus six is 60 minus uh, 60, uh, if minus is taken inside, so minus 60 plus 36. So you get the value of T as 16 second from rest. So that means at T is equal to 16, particle comes to rest. Now, in this problem, uh, we can, uh, next part, first part of the problem does not need VT diagram to be drawn. First, if only this much was asked, there was no need to draw VT diagram. But if we talk about second part, he's asking you to find out the time when particle comes back again to the original position. That means when displacement is zero. When displacement is zero, that means area under VT diagram should be zero. Area under VT diagram should be zero. That means I'll have to draw VT diagram. And also I should understand that area under VT diagram will be zero only when it is partly positive and partly negative. Now I've drawn VT diagram. Zero to six second, it is AT diagram has linear variation with positive slope. VT diagram will have parabolic variation with concavity of so we have learnt it in motion diagrams. Second part, six second onwards, AT diagram has linear variation with uh, negative. So VT diagram will have linear uh, variation. It is AT diagram will have as constant ordinate. AT diagram from six second uh, onwards is constant ordinate. So VT diagram will have linear variation with negative slope. Why negative? Because here acceleration was negative. Now it is continued. AT diagram is uh, shown indefinitely constant. So VT diagram will be indefinitely linear. Now, up to 16 second, you can see that VT diagram is positive. Up to 16 second, VT diagram is positive. So is it possible that area under VT diagram will be zero? No. So that means there will be some instant after 16 second when uh, displacement will be zero. So I'm assuming that uh, displacement is zero after time T1 beyond 16 second. I'm assuming that displacement is zero after time t1 beyond 16 seconds. So then I assume this ordinate as y1. All right. This is positive. This is negative. Now from similar triangles, y upon t1 is equal to this ordinate 60 upon uh, 16 minus 6, that is 10. Again, I repeat from similar to triangles, y upon t1, this triangle and this triangle are similar. In this triangle, y upon t1 is equal to 60 upon 10. This is 16 minus 10. So you get y is equal to 16. Now area under VT diagram. Area under VT diagram is this part. Parabolic, one third of base into y. One third into six into 60. Plus area of triangle, half into 10 into 60. Right? Minus half into T1 into y equals zero. Substitute the value of y as 16. Solve, simplify. This part is equal to 120. This is equal to 300. This is minus half into 61 into T1. Solve it, simplify it, you get T1 as 11.82. That means this particle comes back to original position after T1 second beyond 16 second. So initially, with respect to the start position, total time, what is elapsed or what uh, is needed to come back to original position is 16 plus T1. So I have written it here, particle comes back to original position at 16 plus T1. 16 plus T1 is, say T1 is 11.83 and T1 is uh, T1 is 11.83 and 16, so 27.83 seconds. So particle comes back to original position after 27.83 seconds from rest or from start.
So this is all about the Newton's law. So this is one part of uh, kinetics of particles. So in my book, I have written it as part one. Part two will be work energy principle, which will be covered in next two lectures of mine. And third part is impact and collision that will also be covered in two lectures of mine. Students, many problems, all types of problems I have covered in my video lectures, which will definitely make you understand the topic. Please share QR code of my uh, lectures to your friends so that they will also be benefited. There are no charges for that, right? It is uh, sharing is scary. So under that uh, understanding, you can uh, share the uh, QR code of the video lectures with your friends. More problems are given in my book. Many more, uh, many MCQs are given, which are not possible to be discussed in the video lecture. All right. And some practice problems are also given. So you, those who are interested, they can buy the book on Amazon or from the local bookstores. Right? Link of Amazon is given in the video description also. You are also requested to subscribe to my video, uh, YouTube channel so that you can keep getting the notification as and when the new video lecture is uploaded. Okay? Thank you very much.